in the cardiovascular system general examination is very 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 important very important the vitals so we have discussed about this in the sections on uh, vitals examination pulse is a paramount importance so the rate the rhythm the character the volume of the pulse whether the pulses are felt equally whether there is any asymmetry of pulses all are very relevant in cardiovascular system we have discussed about the rate so if there is tachycardia then obviously we know that there is some problem happening in the heart bradycardias could be associated with heart blocks rhythm is very important we have discussed about irregularly irregular rhythm if the rhythm is irregularly irregular it's most often secondary to atrial fibrillation or ventricular ectopics so we've discussed about how to differentiate about it also about the apex pulse deficit that is very important next very important that we have discussed is the volume so the volume of the pulse is a measure of the pulse pressure so pulse pressure is nothing but the systolic blood pressure minus diastolic blood pressure so we have various cardiac conditions which produce a low volume pulse the ones which produce a high volume pulse the low volume pulses are seen with heart failure it's seen with aortic stenosis and to certain extent in mitral stenosis the high volume pulses the characteristic pulses magnus or the water hammer pulse we say in aortic regurgitation mitral regurgitation you can get high volume pulses so the pulse abnormalities usually are characteristic of left sided heart disease be it aortic or mitral disease the right sided heart diseases that's the tricuspid or pulmonary have more changes with the jugular venous pulse not the arterial pulse to that extent the other most important thing that we have discussed is the character of the pulse so we have discussed in the section on the pulse the normal character of the pulse is what we call it as the catacrotic pulse so catacrotic pulse you have the percussion wave you have the tidal wave the dicrotic notch and the dicrotic wave so based on this we have the systole and diastole so the various abnormalities in the volume of the pulse we have discussed in conditions like aortic stenosis you get pulses anacroticus or you have pulses parvus et tardis we get something called as pulses bisferens in aortic regurgitation which is severe or aortic regurgitation with aortic stenosis and hcl we get the water hammer pulse in aortic regurgitation which is very very characteristic so these are the characters of the pulse that are very important also we specifically discussed about pulses paradoxus paradoxus where the inspiratory blood pressure falls more than 10 mm so this is not a true paradox it's a exaggerated normal phenomena so pulses paradox is very characteristically seen in constrictive pericarditis but more often seen with acute exacerbation of asthma and copd we've also discussed about pulses alternance so pulses alternance is the hallmark of lv failure where there is a alternating high volume and a low volume pulse so we discussed how to measure it etc based on the blood pressure machine so you can take this pigbo manometer and record pulses al alternance as well as pulses paradox so the character of the pulse helps us in a lot of diagnosis in the cardiovascular system so that is very very important next is the uh, delays that you have if you have a, a radio femoral delay you know the diagnosis is coarctation of aorta then very importantly the peripheral pulses if supposedly the peripheral pulses are absent then we know it could be part of an embolism which is arising from the heart and the patient has developed an embolic phenomena so that could be one of the differential diagnoses that we have to look into also uh, you can auscultate on the various vessels and hear the bruise so if the bruise are there then we know that there is some problems with the arteries that are there so that can also tell us the diagnosis also in the pulse we have to look for the pulse thickening of the vessel wall what we demonstrated by the ostler sign so again that's a marker of atherosclerosis or arteriosclerosis so that is what the relevance of the pulse that we have so based on the pulse the pulse rate the pulse volume and the pulse rhythm we can uh, infer a lot of diseases supposedly you have a low volume pulse and you have a high volume pulse so if you have a regular low volume pulse you have an irregular low volume pulse a regular high volume pulse and an irregular high volume pulse so you know that uh, irregularity that is most often atrial fibrillation is seen with mitral valve disease so you know a low volume irregular pulse most often is due to mitral stenosis a regular low volume pulse is possibly due to aortic stenosis whereas a high volume pulse which is regular you know its aortic regurgitation is possibly the cause there a high volume pulse which is irregular mitral regurgitation is the possible cause 
So just by feeling the pulse and feeling the character of the pulse, we can make the diagnosis in a large number of cardiac cases. So pulse is of paramount importance. The next thing that is the blood pressure, it's very important to know, especially we have to know whether it's a high volume pulse based on the blood pressures, that is the pulse pressure. So accurately demonstrating the pulse pressure can help us the diagnosis for various diseases. Again, remember mitral stenosis and aortic stenosis generally have the low blood pressure. Again, significant aortic stenosis, we get something called as a systolic decapitation of the blood pressure. So systolic decapitation of the blood pressure, the blood pressure is usually less than 120. So if there is aortic stenosis patient and the blood pressure is more than 120, we have to consider some other condition that is coexisting there. Same thing with aortic regurgitation, if you look for, aortic regurgitation has a wide pulse pressure. So pulse pressure is usually more than 60. So the diastolic blood pressure can be low, it can be lesser than 30, sometimes it might be zero, up to zero you may be still be able to hear. So aortic regurgitation, especially when you check the blood pressure, we'll have to be very carefully looking for it because you might hear the carotid cough sounds up to zero. In such condition, maybe we'll have to take the phase four of the carotid cough sounds for the diastolic blood pressure. Again, it's very important, one of the uh, blood pressure recordings that we can do in aortic regurgitation to demonstrate the collapsing pulse. So we know that the collapsing pulse is seen in the hands. When you check the brachial artery, radial artery, and you go backwards there, you might find the collapsing there. So it can be objectively demonstrated by checking the uh, blood pressure. So you check the blood pressure with the hands down and then raise the hands and again check the blood pressure. If there is a drop of more than 15 millimeters mercury in the diastolic blood pressure, that is confirmatory of the collapsing pulse. So that's important. Also, we check the blood pressures in all four limbs. This is important in cardiac cases. The blood pressure can be different in different limbs.